Good morning. It's Bernard Nomberg with another weekly episode of Nomberg Law Live. I hope you guys had a great Labor Day weekend. I've got my longtime childhood friend, John Cohen, who is currently the Mississippi State Athletics Director. John, good morning, and I appreciate you giving me a few minutes of your time. Absolutely, Bernard. Thank you. Where And where are you today? Are you in, in Starkville? I'm in Starkville. I'm in my office. You know, we've got our lake right behind us here, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a Thursday. We're getting ready to open up uh, the Joe Moorhead era here in Stark, at, at Mississippi State. Very good, very good. Well, John, you I've known you for years. Our fathers actually knew each other from Tuscaloosa from law school where your dad taught for so many years. And he, he taught so many uh, excellent lawyers all around, not just the state, but around the country. But that's how we first got to know each other through our fathers. And Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you know what? You fulfilled his dream. And how was that? His son who went to law school and became an attorney and, you know, I was a little more disappointing, you know. I didn't, I didn't take that route. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I remember many, many times we got together and were trading things like baseball cards and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. Well, I got news for you. You may have fulfilled my father's dream. You actually played <laughs> for a couple of years of professional baseball and now have what many would consider to be a, a, a dream job. I'm sure some days are dreams, some days are nightmares. But at least for, for a lot of us sports fans, what you're doing is a dream job. So anyway, <laughs> I know that, that uh, Nell and, and the rest of your family are very, very proud of what you do uh, at Hale State. So let's, let's jump in, John. I, I, I know that you, you've had a, you had a great career as a collegiate baseball player, started at Birmingham Southern, finished at Mississippi State, played on some, some excellent teams. Uh, then you transitioned after, I want to say, maybe two years in the Twins organization. That's correct. Yeah. And it, we'll just start right there. What was it? What was that moment? If you recall, you had been an athlete, a, a excellent basketball player, fantastic baseball player. But at some point, you realized that professional baseball was not going to be your lifelong career. Do you remember yeah, that day? Yeah, I, I do. And, you know, it's one of those things where it was one of those uh moments where you just said, hey, I'm going to have to do something else. And, uh, you know, you want to play whatever sport you're in for the rest of your life. And then you realize all of a sudden that uh, you're going to have to do something else. And, and that's exactly what happened to me. And I really had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and uh, really just by, by fate or luck or whatever it was, I got the opportunity to coach college baseball at the University of Missouri and get my graduate degree and re really kind of, you know, started my career out in, in college athletics. Well, I know you went from there to one of the Louisiana schools. I guess it, now it's called Northwestern State, but at the time it had a different name, didn't it? Yeah, it's uh, it's always been Northwestern State. Oh. Um, some people have called it Northwestern State of Louisiana. Um, great experience for me. I, I got my start at Missouri, and then I became, got my first head coaching job at Northwestern Louisiana, and it was really a great opportunity for me. In, in so many different ways, you know, when, when you're that young and you get that kind of responsibility, you're just going to make a series of mistakes. And I was allowed to make mistakes. And, and I really, I, I think that's why my career progressed because you get those opportunities. Well, it certainly did progress going from Florida to Kentucky and then landing back at your alma mater at Mississippi State for almost uh, nine, 10 years, uh, which culminated, I know you, you went to the College World Series runner up in, in 2013, but here's where I want to, I want to brag on you just for a second. Tell me if this is a correct uh, factoid about John Cohen. Are you the only coach to win the SEC championship, the SEC tourney championship, advance to the College World Series as a player, and advance to the College World Series as a coach? That's what I hear. Um, that makes, I mean, that's what I've been told by our sports information director, Bill Martin. Um, you know, a lot of that is, it's just, you know, being on a terrific team with terrific players and terrific coaches, you know, I got to play for the legendary Ron Polk and, you know, Bernard, it, 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 you don't realize even in high school, you're around great, great athletes and you win state championships or you win the SEC or you go to the college world series, whatever it is, you just think that's going to happen for the rest of your life. And what you realize is you just have to be in the right place at the right time. And uh, I have always been incredibly fortunate to be around the right, the right people. 
Well, John, to, for those, you, you being in rarefied air, having played in, I think, the 90 College World Series, and then coached in the finals of the 2013 College World Series, I know that's a little more fresh on your mind, but which of those two experiences, if you can differentiate, was a better experience for you? Or can you say that? You know, it's a great, but all of those were great experiences. They're also different. I, I will just, I'll tell you this, and, and this doesn't have anything to do with the College World Series, but when I was at Kentucky, we had a little left-hander named Craig Snip, and Craig Snip struck out a left-handed hitter from the University of Georgia back in 2006 um, on a Friday night. And when he did that, Kentucky won their first ever Southeastern Conference championship in the sport of baseball. That, that to me is the most memorable thing that's ever happened to me as a, as a player or a coach. And here's why. Kentucky's not supposed to win the Southeastern Conference in baseball. I was told that from the minute I accepted the job when I was interviewing, Kentucky is not going to compete in the Southeastern Conference. It's the northernmost school. It's a school without a facility. It can't be done there. And when you're walking off that field and saying, wow, I mean, we just won the SEC at the University of Kentucky. That was an incredible moment. You know, here at Mississippi State, I know this probably sounds ridiculous, but you're expected to win the SEC. You're, you're expected to compete for national championships and get to the College World Series. Uh, but not only was that not expected at Kentucky, um, our fans, or lack thereof in the sport of baseball, they, they didn't even know we had a baseball program. So um, I, I'd have to say of all my memories, that's the one that, that sticks out the most. That's a fantastic memory. I know you're very proud of that moment. That's, that's for sure. Uh, for those of you just joining us, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm talking with Athletic Director at Mississippi State, John Cohen. Uh, we're on Nomberg Law Live as we come to you every Tuesday at 10 a.m. And I appreciate you spending a few minutes with us, John. Thank you so far for your, for sharing some stories. I want to pivot for just a minute and talk about the last couple of years. You've been in your position coming on two years as the Athletic Director. And in that short period of time, Mississippi State Athletics has really seen some success on the field as well as off the field. And I'd like you to share a little bit about that. I want you to brag on your programs. Yeah, you know, Bernard, I, I'd love to claim credit for this, but, um, you know, when I was a student athlete at Mississippi State, we had a, a gentleman named Larry Templeton who still works for the Southeastern Conference. Um, Larry was a phenomenal athletic director, did such a great job of really moving our athletic uh, department in, into a more modern age. Um, Greg Byrne, who, who's one of my dearest friends, now the athletic director at the University of Alabama, was a mentor of mine. He hired me here at Mississippi State. We worked together in Kentucky. Um, of course, Scott Strickland was my predecessor, one of my closest friends in the world here. He did a phenomenal job. Hired a lot of the coaches that we have here at Mississippi State right now. Um, I'd love to claim credit for the success we've had, but we've had so many good athletic directors who have made key decisions who have helped our program. And, you know, again, it's, it's, I think a lot of this is being in the right place at the right time um, for me personally and, and just being part of this Mississippi State family. Well, I, I saw or read recently that from an academic standpoint, the, the athletic teams overall have had great success, 3.0s and, and higher. Uh, and, and off the field, I know that you're redoing uh, parts of, if not the entire baseball facility. Tell us a little bit about that, if you would. Yeah, we're so proud of what you said, Bernard. Our, our, for the calendar year last year, the 17-18 year, our student athletes had a cumulative grade point average of 3.08. Uh, we had the highest football GPA we've ever had, highest GPA for an athletic department we've ever had. We're awfully proud of that. But as I said, as a baseball coach, a lot of that is due to not only the support that is provided through a lady named Christine Jackson, who, who runs the Templeton Center for us for academics, but you got to give a lot of credit to parents. Uh, and I'm looking at you right now, and you are a result of the way you were raised and the environment that you were raised. We have so many kids. We have over 400 student athletes here that were raised by people that cared about them and got them to this level. And I don't think people talk about that near enough is how thankful we are for the folks who got these kids here. And uh, so, yeah, we're really proud of that. We're really proud of the things we're building here. Um, we're about to finish in on a 60 plus million dollar baseball facility that is state of the art. In my opinion, will be the best baseball facility in the entire country for 
at least amateur baseball, um, we're going to start doing some work on uh, a uh, indoor tennis facility. Our tennis programs have just been phenomenal. Our men's team went to the national championships last year, finished in sixth place. And we returned all six of our starters in men's tennis. Our women's wow. team has been in the NCAA tournament three of the last four years. Um, but we, we have a lot of exciting things happening. We want to enclose our south end zone, or at least partially enclose it, in our football stadium. Uh, we just built a brand new state of the art game day locker room for the sport of, of football. Um, our Humphrey Coliseum is showing a little bit of its age. We want to do some things there to improve that. We went 36 and 2, Bernard, in our building in the Humphrey Coliseum last year with our men's and women's basketball team. So, a lot, a lot of really neat things happening, and we want to keep on improving our facilities here. You guys really have created a, a real home field advantage for all of your sports on the grounds or on the campus in Starkville, and that's a real tribute to, to the environment that you're cultivating. I realize you're giving credit to those who've been there before you, but you're now carrying the torch and doing a, a very fine job yourself, John, so a little credit to yourself as, as well. Um, uh, for those of you just joining us, I'm talking with Athletic Director of Mississippi State, John Cohen. We're talking about a little bit about John's career, a little bit about what's going on on uh, the Mississippi State campus with athletics on and off the court and fields. But you've had a pretty big week. You're slumming it today, but the last week or so, I've seen that you've had Alan Alda and John Grisham as some of your guests. How have those visits? How are those? Uh, uh, well, first of all, I got to tell you, we have one of the premier presidents of our university in the entire country, uh, Dr. Mark Keenum. And, and Dr. Keenum spent a significant amount of his career in Washington, D.C., uh, working for the federal government and in the in the agriculture department. And he, he is just so well connected. We get tremendous speakers here at Mississippi State. And I'm always telling our student groups, take advantage of these great opportunities that you have on this campus because we have amazing speakers come. John Grisham, as you mentioned, was here yesterday and or two days ago. And the, the day before that, you're right, Alan Alda came. We had a packed house in Lee Hall that he spoke to, and he was talking about communication and science, just fascinating stuff. Got the opportunity to visit with him uh, after that, along with Nell. And I, I tell you, in this position, I get to be around, thank, you know, in some manner or another, I get to be around some pretty famous people, just like you, Bernard. And uh, to, just to be around, it was so intimidating to be around a man like Alan Alda. You know, your, your childhood is consumed with, with MASH and, and all the movies that he did. You mentioned The West Wing before. Um, but, but more than all of that, he is just a, a really world-class human being. Um, I enjoy listening to his podcast as well, and it's just, just a thrill to, to get to be around greatness. That's fantastic. Uh, as we, we're almost finished, John, and again, I appreciate your, your few minutes today. For those Bulldog fans who are coming to the ball games on the Saturdays this fall, and for those visitors who, who dare enter Starkville's grounds uh, as an opposing uh, team, and fans, what should fans expect this year, this fall, uh, by way of hospitality, by way of what goes on in the stadium? Talk to us a little bit about, about what's going on that's new at, at the, the campus and, and on yeah. the stadium. One of our initiatives when I first became the athletic director, along with our president, is we wanted to lower the cost of concessions. That was really important to me. You know, I'd always admired what has been going on at the Masters there in Augusta. Um, you know, things like $2 hot dogs, things like making an affordable experience for our fan base. We want to meet them halfway. Mississippi State truly is a family, and we want to have a family environment. And it, it's really hard to do that when you're charging 5 or $6 for, you know, something like a hot dog. Um, so we, we really want our, our atmosphere to, to be better in that regard. Um, for the first time ever, this is a really popular thing. We're going to have metal detectors. By 2020, it will be the law of our league that all SEC football stadiums will have metal detectors, and we're going to go ahead and lead the way there. We're going to be the first school to do that. I know Alabama will do it, but we will open up before Alabama, so we'll be the first school to do it. Uh, in a football environment. It'll take our fans a little bit longer to get to their seats. But again, we want safety for our fans. We want safety for our student athletes. We don't feel like Starbowl or Mississippi State's a dangerous place. It's just another opportunity for us to make sure that we're putting uh, our fans first and doing the right thing. Uh, when, if you go to any NFL or NBA stadium now, you're going to walk through metal detectors. So we're going to do that for the first time. 
Um, again, our players will be entering the stadium from a different area. They're going to be entering north west. We'll still have our famous dog walk where our kids get off the buses and our fans can greet them. It's just an incredible atmosphere. I tell you, Bernard, I always go up to our sideline reporters, you know, whether we're playing on CBS at 2.30 or a night game or the 11 a.m. game, whatever it is, and I always go up to the sideline reporters and say, compare our atmosphere to other places. I tell you, the, those reporters tell us that, especially in our afternoon and night games, our atmosphere is as good as any atmosphere in college football. And, and in my lifetime, I didn't know if that was ever going to be possible. But we have an incredible atmosphere now, and it's, it's so much fun to be a part of. Even all of the folks that I grew up with in Tuscaloosa and in Alabama who mm-hmm. came over for the Alabama game last year and kind of got big eyes and said, wow, John, this is a big-time national college football environment. And, and that's what you know, we were trying to, to get, and uh, it, it's just a really, really fun place to be. Well, I, I, I had the either the pleasure or the misfortune of playing uh, at Mississippi State when I was an undergraduate, and that was a pretty hostile environment. It was a spanking, if I remember correctly. But more recently, coming to the baseball games, I don't know of a better atmosphere in the country, and I can't believe I'm saying that, how I'm such a big Vanderbilt baseball fan. You know that. But coming to Mississippi State on campus for those baseball games, the left field lounge and, and all of that atmosphere that you all have cultivated over the years, I cannot imagine a better place to watch or play in a college baseball environment. And that, that really is a big tribute uh, to you, to the program, to what the environment you're trying to cultivate there. Well, it started a long time ago. It certainly didn't start with me, Bernard. But mm-hmm. I will tell you, I think with what we've been able to do with our new facility at Duty Noble, uh, we have helped that along. We, we, have, we have added to the famous Left Field Lounge. Um, we, we've made it a really fan-friendly environment, and it truly is a family here at Bernard. I, I've been a, a lot of, I've been fortunate enough to be at a lot of different places around the country, and truly, the Mississippi State fan base is a family. And when, when you truly have that family, there's so many things that can be accomplished together. And um, I, I truly think this is one of the great times, not only to be a Mississippi State fan, but to be a part of this great university. We have 22,000 students on our campus today for the first time ever. Just to give you an idea, when I was in school here 30 years ago, we had about 13,000 mm-hmm. um, students here. So um, really neat things happening on this campus. And again, it's it's a real honor just to be a part of it. Well, John, I, I sure appreciate you spending some time with us today. I know that uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on in Starkville. Thank you for sharing what's going on with the programs and on campus. And, and for those of you who have been watching, I've been chatting for a little bit with John Cohen, the Mississippi State Athletic Director. If you have comments or questions you want to ask of of John, just put them in the comments section. We'll make sure that they get routed to the right folks in the athletics department. John, again, thank you for your time. Please send my regards to Nell, and I I hope that that you guys have a successful uh, fall uh, semester. Thank you so much, Bernard. It's been an honor. Take care.